In the next part, we're going to add the label. I'm assuming that you're kind of new to Blender, so we're going to step through just all the little details required to do this. We're starting off exactly where we left off in the last tutorial, and we're going to start off by taking the top part and duplicating that. So we're going to come up to Object, do a Duplicate Object function, press the Escape key, press the question mark or the backslash to isolate that into its own temporary working environment. Let's come into the top view, and I'm going to go into wireframe, come over here and temporarily turn off subdivision, tab key. I'm going to come over and use the loop cut function to add a new loop around the perimeter, and then we're going to add a new loop until we get right about to there. Let's switch over to the select box function. In face mode, we're going to marquee generally around this area. Now we're going to over select and that's okay. Hold the shift key down and just click, click, click to deselect those. And that is going to be the geometry that forms our label. Come up to select and do an invert. Press the X key. Delete those faces. Let's take a look at this with subdivision turned on and we can see that we're getting a lot of rounding right here. In fact, I'm going to turn optimal display back on. So we're going to come back over to the loop cut function, click, hold and drag and pull until we get right about there. So that this is kind of a square area, but I, I don't like the rounding. I'd like it to be more perfectly round. So let's turn off subdivision temporarily. We're going to switch over to vertex mode, select this vertex, bring up the context menu, do bevel vertices and just start moving the mouse until you see that change happen. It'll be kind of quick. Get it to about, I don't know, right about there. But we want to change the segments to five. Let's scroll up to the top, to the opposite side, select that vertex and press Shift R and it'll replicate that function. In face mode, we'll select that, come down to the bottom, hold the shift key and select that, bring up the context menu, and then we're going to invoke poke faces, switch to vertex mode, select this vertex, hold the shift key, select that, bring up the context menu, do merge vertices at last. Come up here, click, hold the shift key, click, and then shift R to replicate that. So now what we want to do is adjust the geometry. Let's come into perspective mode. This will help. We don't want the label to follow the geometry exactly. We're going to assume it's like a paper label that when draped over, it doesn't match exactly the geometry and we want to relax it a little bit. So we'll come over here into edge mode, double click this, and then we're going to switch down here to the edge slide function. Now I like to be able to just use active tool so I can directly select and pull that in. I'm looking kind of primarily right up here at this area. I don't want it to get quite too close. We'll double click this loop, grab it and pull it in. And so we've relaxed that area. In fact, when we come in now and we take a look at this with subdivision turned back on, it'll look like it's draped over the tin can itself without following it too closely. We're going to switch to the top. Let's take a look at this. This kind of dark maroon color is a hard edge and we don't really need it so much. Let me turn off subdivision. We don't really need it so much on here because we've got another boundary loop here and here that's going to constrain the geometry. And so I'm going to press shift and E, just move the mouse until you see the factor come up and set it to minus one to remove it. Let's come over and take a look at one last thing. Let's make sure we're in the top view and I'm going to remove perspective. We'll focus on this area because we've got curvature and I'd like the curvature to stop about right here. But currently, because the next polygon is right there at that boundary, let's turn on subdivision and you can see that there's just this little bit of curvature coming into this flat area and I don't want that to happen. So, we already have an edge, an existing edge right here. I'm going to double click that and let's just go ahead and move this. I can press the G key actually and then X and we'll move that about to there. And you see how that kind of curtails that curvature from moving too far into the flat area. Okay. 
The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at adding thickness to this because this is where we add just a very small detail. The paper is very thin, but let's go ahead and add this because it's a really good detail to look at. What we want to do is add a modifier. We already have a subdivision modifier, and so we're going to have a stacking order to take care of. Let's come over to solidify, and we're going to see that it adds solidify. Solidify gets added after subdivision, so it subdivides first, and then it applies thickness. And we can see that here if I turn on subdivision. It applies thickness to the subdivided geometry, and that's what we want to happen. That's, a, that's an important thing, because if we do it the opposite direction, where we put solidify first, then do you see how it rounds? It thickens it, and then it applies subdivision to the thickened geometry. We don't want that to happen. Okay, let's turn off this, but we have to adjust the thickness because it's obviously not right. The first thing is it's going in the wrong direction. Right now, that thickness is going to go right into the metal can component, which we don't want to happen. Change this into a positive direction by putting offset to 1, and then let's change the value, the actual distance, to 0 0.05. I think that's too thick still, so let's take it down to 0 0.01. And I think that'll be a good appropriate value for us. What we need to consider next is the application of the label to the top, but also the material for the thickness. So if we come in, we want to look at this option where it says fill the thickness. And you can see if I don't apply that, we don't get polygons for the thickness, but we do get polygons for the, for the offset geometry. And that we don't actually need, so I'm going to turn that off so all we get is just the rim. We don't get duplicate offset geometry for the face. Let's come down to the materials, and we're going to add two material slots to our geometry. I'm going to click that twice. Material slots tell materials what polygons to apply themselves to on the object. They're not stacking in, in a material stacking order per se. So let's come to the first one, and we're going to click New, which actually assigns a material, a new material, to that material slot. And we're going to call this Label. And in fact, I'm going to switch over to a shaded view so we can see this happening. Temporarily, we're going to come down to Base Color. We'll just give it a nice blue color. So by default, all of the polygons, including the thickened polygons, are given that blue color. On the second material, we're going to click New, and then we're going to call this Paper. Now let's come back to the Modifier Properties. Scroll down to where an option is Materials. And this is a little bit obtuse to understand. The values of 0 mean that the thickened geometry gets the same material that's applied to everything else. It's all the same material. But we want the thickened material to be the paper. So I'm going to select both of these and press 1. And what that will do is it's going to tell paper to be assigned to the thickness. The, the value of 1 says look at the next material slot below the first one and use that for the thickness. That's all that it does. That's how it works. If you applied a value of negative 1, you could apply it to a slot above label. But we don't have that condition. Now we need to come in and set up the UVs so that we can apply a label to this pretty easily. Let's switch back to Outline, come into the top view, and let's switch over to the UV Editor. Switch over into Face Mode and select all the geometry with the A key. We don't see anything over here. So let's come over to the Object Data Properties and expand the UV Map entry. It doesn't have a UV Map assigned. In Blender, you can have multiple UV maps assigned to a single object, which is really helpful. Since we don't have one, as soon as we do a UV generation operation, it's going to create an entry for us. So we don't need to worry about that. What we're going to do is in top view, scroll over to where it says UV, and then we're going to do a project from view. And there we can see that. Do a frame selected to get that into the view. And because of the way I've developed my bitmap, I want to rotate this. So we're going to rotate it. I'm going to hold the control key down so that we snap to five degree segments. And then come up to UV, come down to where it says Pack Islands. 
Now, by default, it's going to come back over and it's going to rotate it, and I don't want it to rotate it. That's okay. Let's close this down. And I'm going to press the S key to scale it just down slightly. We're, we're just going to leave that there the way it is for right now. And we're going to switch over to shading because we're going to bring in a bitmap. Let's do this. I'm going to, let's rotate the view so we can see this a little bit better. We're in shading. We have the material. I want to come over to label. So we're going to select label. We need to bring in a bitmap that I've already developed. So add image texture. Drop that right there. And we're going to load in the texture that's part of the start file that is called labelmap.png. And we'll load that right there. And then we're going to drive that into base color. Ta da! And there we go. So it's going to use that default UV map. So we don't need to really hook anything else up. But we could come over. Let's come back to the UV editor. Let's zoom out a little bit and we'll just check to see if anything needs to be adjusted so for instance it may be that i actually need this rotated by 180 degrees so we'll come over to rotate and i'm just going to hold the control key down to snap segments and there we go just in case we want the barcode to be at the bottom and this to be at the top and there we go that's all we need to do as far as setting up the label to match to the rest of the geometry. So up to this point, we've been working in, in this isolated environment for this piece of geometry. I'm going to press the question mark key to return back here so we've got that integrated into the rest of our model. 